Hello, this is Brendan, and in this video, I'm just looking at some uh, coloring techniques with the uh, with, with the metal. If you're trying to paint or draw metal, and so this is I'm trying to cover two two aspects here. One is using the software GIMP itself, and the other is uh, you know understanding the metal. So uh, you take uh, whichever it is that you're looking to uh, you know whatever it is you're looking to learn whatever whatever it is you want to do take that out of this um, so what I've done here is I have a confusing amount of layers as usual but uh, we're trying to boil it down to just these two here which is a color layer that I've done with multiply now this is important too if you're new first you do a black and white and you don't have to do it this way but this is one of the easier ways of getting a painting done if you want to be fast at all you know some people want to take their time that's fine but if you're uh, getting into the industry level and uh, you have a lot of stuff to do and you're trying to get it done real quick it's actually a lot easier to get your values done in black and white and then you make a, another layer on top of it which is set to the multiply as you can see up here I'm trying to uh, yeah, make that pop up over here. You have the multiply. The default it's set to normal. The layer, this is the the layer mode, right? It's it's uh, set to normal by default. But then you go down to multiply, it'll make this effect. So let's go ahead and take that layer. That's the the color layer I have here. Actually, I have to call it color. And let's set it back to normal, and see what happens. And there you go. When it's set to normal you see it's just a regular layer that has colors on it and they're painted over you know it's going to paint over whatever uh, layers are underneath of it but when I set the same layer to multiply and underneath it is the drawing with the gray values that I had then look at how the colors blend in with the values like that that's what the multiply layer does so now that I have that <clears throat> um, I'm just going to go into the metal area here. And what I did is first I had my values, then I added my colors, basically what I wanted. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge those so I can just basically start painting. And the reason, I mean, this might be, it's not just my technique. It's uh, a lot of people do it like this, but I, I don't think everybody does it exactly how I do it. Because what I do now that I have that done is I can zoom in here and just use the color picker and just start you know painting over stuff that that I don't want or don't need just like that so I don't have to keep choosing colors right and you're gonna say well look you have a whole bunch of different types of colors in there and that's why I'm gonna set my opacity down real low so I can come in here choose a color and just brush over a certain area many times like that and slowly you know work away the stuff that that I don't want in there and so uh, this is going to be, I'll turn the opacity up a little bit to get rid of some things like this, uh, the, the black lines, they're all going to go. I'm going to get rid of them uh, eventually. So this becomes a, a painterly kind of look. So, for example, this area here, I have this black line up here. I'm just going to go over the top part of it with the gray that's at the bottom there. And you can mix it up, just do, you know, do whatever you have to do, basically, get the job done. And then I'm going to take a white, I'm going to go all over the top area of it, because the top of this will probably be getting hit by uh, a lot of sunlight. There's a bright day out. And this is going to be my focus. This part right here is this metallic um, helmet that he's wearing. Go back to a gray. Bring this down here. I'm just trying to get rid of those black lines for starters. <clears throat> and I want a darker kind of gray for the bottom part here. So as you can see, this is uh, basically the technique that I'm trying to uh, get across here today. Is to just, I can even grab this black. Yeah, that'll work. It's just to use separate layers, use them in a certain way with the multiply layer to get your colors in. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and uh, just start painting. And should not take too long. My ambition for now is just to get this this part done. The uh, the helmet. Now notice how uh, in here we have this weird reflective stuff for the metal. This is a part of what's important for uh, learning to draw metal. 
there's going to be a sharp contrast here where the white is a highlight that's reflecting. And I even made this bubble. It's like kind of a stereotypical little thing to make this little this little dent in there, where it's uh, that is kind of to show that there might be a little bump or a ridge in the metal of this uh, of this helmet. And so, you know, it's going to make a little ding like that. And also, it could simultaneously represent, I mean, you know, we're playing a trick on the eye, basically. It could also go to show that there's just some type of, uh, you know, highlight beaming off there. Because metal has very strong reflective capabilities, right? Metal is reflective. Now, about all these random colors I put in here. In order to make metal look reflective and shiny, what you're going to do is think of it as a mirror at first. And so I'm thinking on the opposite side of him, he's looking off into the distance. What is there there? There's probably mountains. Mountains get blue as they go off into the distance, right? So I put some uh, blue mountains there. Oops. Not like that. Okay, yeah. And some green. But I'm trying to do it with a, uh, what do we call the um, <clears throat> uh, opacity down quite low. Now, over here, if you think about it, where, where are things going to be reflecting? It's not going to be a full mirror straight at us. So in this front area here near his eye, if you can see where I'm trying to highlight right there, that area is probably going to reflect right back at us. But in this back part, that should probably go down. And I can just raise my opacity here and kind of have that taper off into the distance. So it's not going to be like a mirror exactly pointing right at us, but kind of off this way. It'll be rounded off because the helmet itself is round. And this might all look kind of funny at first, but just listen, think about the logic that I'm presenting you with, and then we'll see what happens in the end. We're saying it's reflective, it's shiny, it's smooth, there's going to be colors reflecting here and there, all of these types of things. And I need to get rid of these black lines. See, doing a sketch is so critical to uh, getting a, a good foundation for any kind of drawing or painting. Even if you're doing like a big traditional oil painting in real life, you're going to want to have uh, some thumbnails done first, a sketch or something like this. But in this case, yeah, we just draw obviously on, on digital, so don't have to worry too much about that. However, I have to get rid of these black lines now. They're nice to have there as a guideline. There's definitely an easier way to go about this too, I'm sure. But this is, yeah, it's what I'm doing at the moment. It's my way of getting it done. Now I'm thinking there's clouds up in the, in the heavens there, so to speak, and there's going to be a little bit of blue reflecting here and there. <coughs> so I added those colors to uh, to that top part of his uh, helmet here, and I want to really get those black lines out of there. I don't want this blue to actually be this strong, but in order to get those black lines away, I'm going to do that first. Just whatever I have to do to get cover those up. Sort of a, uh, a makeup procedure here. And coming around to the top. Getting very, very close to the end part of this. Just a little bit, a little bit laborious and tedious, right? And you have to be meticulous. All those words that end with the is, but that's what it takes sometimes to get something good done. This is art here, in this situation, and also if you're just uh, trying to pick up some gimp skills, this is what it's all about: is uh, taking the time to get stuff done. Now we're starting to feel it come through where you can see that shiny metallic metal. And as I said earlier, I hope that you can feel that, uh, let me just use this here. I hope that you can feel that reflective quality where you just know without thinking about it that he's in some kind of, uh, you know, like, like a field or a mountain or something. You can see the background there. Yeah, I'm having problems getting this part to paint right. Okay, there we go. But we're just going to isolate this uh, this helmet for now. Clean it up a little bit over here. This doesn't need to be so dark, or if it is, this part should be dark too. Let me see. Yeah, something like that. And then uh, 
thing about the the grooves here and things when you're doing metal there's always some kind of uh, it's rare that you just have a flat piece of metal just like a mirror normally you're drawing something techy or some some type of uh, machine or something and always uh, this is one of the most important parts of getting that type of stuff done correctly is these little grooves that you find in things like this here what you're going to want to do in that area in that situation is to always remember that this part over here right I'm going to try and emphasize that that's going to have shade to it and then the other side will have a bit of light so that'll make it pop out right that way you can see where it goes in and where it comes out and the shape of it in the form so you have a little highlight on on the groove in the, the ridges there. Here we'll need a little bit of shadow, have a light popping out where it's not shadow. It's all about dark and light. Here's dark, and I figure if there's a shadow here, then underneath it there should be some light popping out, right? That's kind of natural. The light is bouncing all over the place, so sometimes you just do some random marks here and there, make it a bit more realistic. I want this to really be smooth here. I'm going to pass the up a little bit, and that'll work. Okay, getting rid of a bit more blue. All right, so now we're at that point where I got to, I've got my foundational colors around, and I promised you that we'd turn it into something um, that looks more like metal. But by first, even now, if you come back or, you know, blur your eyes out a bit, you can see it, that it has that metallic kind of feeling to it. I want this to bring a little bit more shape. Right, you guys go up and round like that. A little bit more shape of the of the helmet. Otherwise, I feel like I'm good to go here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tool, the lasso tool, and I really want to isolate this area. Or, I mean, there's other ways of going about it. I'm, I'm just going to get a rough, you know, kind of form around here because I don't want colors. Uh, jumping all over the place because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another layer and I'm going to use some effects in there some uh, coloring and shading effects now technically the lighting in this is real weird it's a bright day I don't know exactly uh, where I'm intending for the light to come from myself but I think it's from over on the right here so let me get a big brush a very big one I'm going up to like 400, 500 now, right, like that. And what I'm going to do on a very low opacity, I just assume, actually even lower, just assume that it's coming from over here. And then I'm going to erase the parts and bring that down where it's not. And there you go. Now I have to make this eraser much smaller. I need to zoom in a bit. So what I'm doing is making sort of a gradient, a gradient shade. Now, since light is bouncing around, this is a more of an artistic tip. You might want to take it off of the edges, the top and the side of things, because the light is going to bounce back. But you can see this area here now. Let me get into a, uh, a highlighter here. You can see from here to here, what happened is I have a slow gradient that one over top of that original uh, color of, of the helmet that we have and it just slowly slowly uh, gradually I can't get the brush I want yeah it slowly gets a little bit darker as it's going over this way but not too uh, extravagant right so it's almost like you put a, a layer a coating over top of the mirror something like this and I'm going to do the same exact thing now but with white for the bright side everything else that we see in there technically speaking it's just reflection of stuff you know like I could even just stop that sentence right there <laughs> it's reflection of stuff let me put temporarily a little dark gray layer underneath of the entire layer that I'm working on here so I can see where yeah you can see where that excess light was coming out there and I'll go back to the foreground layer here. Oh no, the layer, this extra layer I just made, which is on top of the foreground layer, that's there just to uh, add my my extra shading here now. Now you can see how the 
the light gradient I just added, it's you know shining on the, the left side here and it's slowly fading off into that dark over there. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing with this. Uh, I'm just going to merge that down because I'm actually kind of happy with how that looks. But let me add, also bring the opacity down real, real low and make my brush really, really big. So it's just a little bit like that, right? And what I'm going to do is tap this area where I think the light is coming from a few times. And you can even just leave it like that. See how it's up here? I don't. If I wanted to, I could choose to erase that that uh, that part that's not on the helmet, and that would be fine. But since light actually does shine out a lot like that, you can actually just leave that. It'll be like a light effect where it looks like it's glowing. Because technically speaking, it should be glowing if the light is bouncing off of it. Okay, so I'm going to merge that layer down. <coughs> merge down. Make another one. And basically do exactly the same thing. Let's get into... It doesn't have to be... It can be gray, you know, dark gray or something like this. And let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to go like this. Slowly bring it over. And then erase the parts that I don't want. First you fill it all in, then you erase it. Now I'll do the same with white. And I'm using the brush a few more times. I'll drag it over here once, and then I'll come a little bit shorter. And then the part that I want to be the brightest, I'll hit it a few more times. That way it makes a gradient. The part that where I hit the brush stroke with more is going to have more of a... It's going to make it more white, right? So if I just keep tapping over this part again and again and again and again, eventually it becomes pure white. But if I only go over it once or twice, then I'll have a little bit of white to it. So by managing that, you can you know, find a gradient, perfect, uh, perfect amount of gradient that you need. Now we really have a metal-looking thing there. What can we do to, uh, you know, whoops, wrong thing there, to really polish this off, to really finish it? I'm gonna merge that down. I like how it is. I get my white out. Get my white color out here. Bring the opacity up a little bit. Not that much. Okay. So, yeah, I can paint rather strongly with it. And again, I'll just make a new layer. I always like to make a new layer to draw on so I can play with the uh, the amount of gradient and stuff like that. I'm just going to highlight some of these parts here. Just to about there. Because the back part apparently is going to have some shading to it. A little bit more highlight here. And then you might even choose to take a gray because it still looks a little bit like a paint by numbers kind of thing and I want it to you know have that metal look to it not just a mirror it's not supposed to actually <laughs> be a mirror it's supposed to be metallic so we'll take um, that color the other brush and we can actually just put a layer of grayness over it in some spots where it feels to be uh, too strong right. just like that then after that, it's all a matter of just technique. You can play with it all day long, basically. Get it to where you want it to. But I would say right there, we already have a pretty convincing looking... I might want to take off some of those last parts that I did. Yeah, you can play with it. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Get some of this darker part here. And bring that opacity down a lot. Anyway, something along those lines. Just remember it's an object like anything else. It needs lighting, shading, color reflecting, and stuff like that. And that's it. To uh, Both to use the GIMP using separate layers, multiply layer and all that, um, to get certain effects out for a metallic effect. And also a lot of tips on uh, lighting and uh, shading and stuff with uh, metallic type objects. This isn't the only way to go about this. There's tons of different ways, but it's something that I do um, You know, for me in order for me to get that kind of effect. Always flip it around, of course, make sure that you have things how you like them. I think this should be, looks like it should be a little bit more slanted that way. Not quite sure. Ah, look at that brush where I need it. Yeah, I'll work on that later. Anyway, that's enough for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know, and uh, have a nice day. See you.